Good morning, it's Dr. Kathy and it is May 22nd and we're going to have this wonderful Sunday ceremony. And I am delighted to have all of those who are here live. And I really would enjoy to know if those who are just re watching it, not live, just let me know what you think. It's just a lot of fun. It's a, it's a community. In fact, we're starting 15 minutes late because we've been so much of a community, we've been jabbering and it's been a good time. So we begin every Sunday ceremony by going into the heart source. And for people who may be new to this information, the heart source is a process that Amma gave me, I don't even know how many years ago. And it's an example, oh, and she just told me, she says, I'll give you other structures to construct too. But it is a structure that we can construct with our energy field that opens our intuition, connects our heart to our third eye, and is also a Merkaba and a protective energy. How about that all at one time? And it's really amazing. So there are seven steps to it. The first step is to moving your awareness into the front of your heart chakra, which is at the center of your chest. And when I first started doing this, I didn't exactly know how to go into the front and just imagine that you're standing there, little bit of you, which is actually the full you, but standing in front of this heart chakra, this tunnel, as it were, this funnel, this wonderful spiraling thing and walking inside of it and go deeper and deeper inside of it and just enjoy the energy. Now I'm gonna ask you to stay there and I'm gonna ask you just to imagine that part of you detaches from that part of you and goes around to your back and now moves into the back of your heart chakra. Again, see yourself walking into the back of your heart chakra, going deeper and deeper. Now this is a very wonderful place to be. Keep going. And you will notice that, oh, maybe you're in like a hallway or a tunnel. You do feel that in all of them. But then suddenly you're going to step into this expansive place known as your sacred space. There you go. And now those two parts of you are still there. And now another part not splits is in a negative thing, but another part of you takes the opportunity to come to the front of you and move into the front of your third eye, which is, if people aren't familiar with that, if you go into the center between your brow, go up, actually, if you move your fingers, try this now, all of you, put your hand right between your two eyebrows, move your finger up and you'll feel yourself go into a little indentation. It's like you go over a little ridge, into the indentation, that's your third eye. There's actually a first, second, and third, how about? But we're on first and second eye, and there's a fourth and a fifth. But you go into there and just go deep within again. Feel yourself moving in. And now again, have another section of you split off. So you've heard of bilocating. We're going to be, I don't know what the word for seven is, but we're going to be seven locating in this. So now go around into the back. Just come to the where you imagine that the other side would be of the heart shock of the third eye and move into that. Somebody's a little bit too far to the right. There you go. I had to kind of move my awareness around so I found the opening. Go deep within. There you are, you're in the four parts, front and back of the heart, front and back of the third eye. And now, by the way, you're in four different dimensions. And now imagine, see, seem, and tend a beam of energy connecting your heart chakra to your third eye and feel that connection, feel what happens. That's another dimension, that's five. Now move your Awareness straight up to the center of the universe. You're bringing that line straight up through your crown to the center of the universe. Don't worry about where it is. You don't have to need to know. 
Now you're in six different awarenesses, consciousness, dimensions, if you would. And now staying in those six places, come all the way down that beam of energy, all the way down, all the way down to your heart, and now all the way down into the center of the universe. Now just feel that, notice that. When you connect this, although there's an infinite emphasis on your heart and your third eye, you are activating and connecting each one of your chakras. And now, so that's your heart source. And now we're going to do some fun with it. You get to command things and you are going to command your chakras. Spin. Spin as fast as is safe for me. And your intention is to remove congestion, the spinning, you know, the centrifugal force that can spin things out is spinning congestion out of all seven of those chakras. Front and back, for those that have front and back, it's only chakras two through six who have front and back. Breathe in deeply now. You've got a connection above, you have a connection below. So when you inhale, just feel, see, sense that energy coming in from above and below. There you go. And that bring that energy into your heart and then just allow it to fill your chakras so that as you spin, it has good, clear energy. We don't want to use your energy. We want to use universal energy. There you go. And if you know that, like if you had a bad day yesterday, you could simply say, set your intention. I release all low vibration energy that I acquired yesterday. You know, one of the things is that I acquired and held on to. Chakras spin, keep spinning chakras. I'm telling them we didn't give them permission to stop spinning. There you go. Now just feel it all go out. Good. Now we're gonna do another connection, but this time from your heart, connect with your healing team. Those of you who aren't familiar with this work, whether you're listening live or you're watching later on, even 20 years from now, if you're not familiar with your healing team, just know you have a healing team. And all of those that work with you with healing, no matter what modality you use, are with you. You have an encodement team. You have a soul healing team. Your soul self is involved, which is what Amma calls the higher self. And your body soul, which is the soul that inhabits your body. You are borrowing your body for this lifetime. You're borrowing this body from conception to physical death. And that's your healing team. And you have any other special people that you want to involve. I've had people who have brought in Kuan Yin, Yeshua, Mother Mary, others that are real special to them, Hilarion, who's the Chohan of the fifth ray. Okay, good. Now, healing team, please apply the four foundational plugins to each of the seven parts of the heart source. Now they're doing that. And let me, as they're working with that, they can do it in an instant, but I'm gonna have them get time. So I'm gonna explain this to you. Is that every part of going into the heart source, we can be affected by something that's happened into our lives. And there may need to be a healing to be done. And the four foundational plugins are the basic plugin, which we use the most, because it is included in every plugin. The Healing Over Lifetimes plugin, which looks for any type of wound, similar wound in any lifetime you have, past, present, future, and parallel. The removal of victim consciousness, which we seem to accumulate with any wound. And the implant removal plugin which looks for the congested energy related that's almost like it's solidified. 
you know, like when you cook and you clean your, your pan and yet there's this grease that's burnt on there and like you can't get it, well, you probably could, you know, sometimes I think I can get it off with dynamite, but you know, you have to blast it. But in this way we have our healing team remove that type of congestion easily from us. Now just notice if you feel any difference. There we go. Now, another command, heart source, expand outward to either the tips of where my fingertips would be if I held my hands out up and down. Well, it goes down below you, but it, they'll make it even or to the outer reaches of my aura, whichever is further. So some of you have an aura that goes out into the next room. Your heart source will go out. And just notice what happens. I want you to know that you can activate intuition in this way. And if you listen from your heart, you can hear, see, sense, smell, taste, using your different psychic senses, things that are around you. You may not know these consciously, but you're aware of what happens in your body and yourself can activate that and act accordingly. Okay, good. Now just relax. Your chakras will come to the, a spin just when you're not doing it, what we're gonna do next, but when you're not doing that, they'll just gently relax. They will be of a higher vibration than they were before. And now another command, chakras, spin at the exact vibration needed for me to assimilate, understand, integrate the channeled message for today. Now we have that set up, but we're going to do a healing circle first. Oh, we need the healing lecture room, don't we? So our healing lecture room, which I learned from the Melchizedek method from Alton Camandon a number of years ago, there is a floor of light below us, a canopy of light above us. There are pillars of light in the four corners. And we have angels that are surrounding the perimeter in a sense they make up the walls surrounding the per perimeter of our healing lecture room. In the Melchizedek method, they call it the healing room. I've added lecture because we do all of the lecture in here and it's another protective energy. And in the central pillar, right in the center, there is a central pillar. Now I want you to know this room is infinite. It could include everyone on this planet, 8 billion people, near 8 billion people. And we could bring in galaxies and everything. It's an infinite area. There we go. Now in the central pillar are all manner of spiritual beings that you would like to invite. The ones that I see are the ones that come in so much for me. Um, I see Yeshua and Buddha, they come in together. They're such great friends. And I see Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, white buffalo calf woman. I see lots of feminine energy. There's Dwa Kul. There's my brother-in-law waving at me. We lost my brother-in-law in November. He says, you did not lose me. You know where I am. I am not lost. Many, many others, saints, masters, whoever you pray to, whoever you enjoy working with, they're all there in that central pillar. And then Amma and Abba are overlighting the entire healing lecture room. So that's both the feminine and divine aspects of God. And now for the healing, like now for our healing center. 
I want you to set your intention that you are in the outer ring of a circle. Now, when you are in this outer ring and you are being joined by hundreds of beings that are beyond the veil, everybody here and hundreds of beings that we are going to work with healing for ourselves and for others. And don't try to figure this out, just do it. Your third dimensional self, that's you by the name you go by, step out into the healing circle. And your multidimensional self stays behind in the healing circle. They're in the outer rim of the healing circle, sending healing. And now invite into the healing circle anyone else you wish to receive healing. Now, this is a time where you can unmute and give names. If you wish to, you don't have to. They'll be in the middle of the healing circle by your intention. But if anybody wishes to put someone else in the healing circle and wants us to know and agree to that, and we all agree to whomever is here, please state their names. My uh, sister-in-law and her family uh, just passed away. Debbie. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my husband, Robert Bono and E. Tamin. Thank you. Terry Ann Nikidis. Thank you. Anybody Bob else? And Karen. I'm sorry. Bob and, Karen. Bob and Karen along. Okay. Yeah. And Roger and Marvin and Pixie. Wonderful. Thank you. You. Susie Barron. Thank you. Reagan, Riley, Teresa, Joyce, Elijah, Cindy, and Lee. Thank you. Anybody else? I place my friend Kathy in. It's her birthday. She also has stage four colon cancer. Today's her birthday. And I place my great nibbling in who um, she goes by. They go by the pronouns of they. And it is her birthday today. Their birthday today. Oh. And my dad and his wife, who have been struggling with COVID for the last week, two weeks. And I also place within the healing circle the families of anyone here who are struggling because there, is, there are wounds within the family. We're asking for healing of the family, healing for those who are going through marital difficulties, separating or thinking about it and healing for the children that are involved. Healings between parents and children. I also ask that we may send healing love to the whole area of the Ukraine, that healing love into Russia and to the Ukraine. And I understand from a friend, there's some unrest in Australia with their elections, which were just, were yesterday. May they also experience peace and love. And now just say chakra spin, spin at the speed needed for me to be sending healing love to this circle. Breathe in deeply, bring in from above below. If you want to extend your hands outward like I'm doing, feel free. But you can also just imagine yourself doing that, standing in your other self. And remember, you are sending this love to yourself, to your families. I'm sure everybody has their families in here, to your loved ones and to all of those who are in the center of the circle.
And Amma and Ava, we offer gratitude to you for all the healing that is being done. And I just invite each one of you to offer gratitude in your own way. And now just relax. Come back to your third dimensional body who is also multi-dimensional, right? And as Amma says, pull up a chair. See yourself in the lecture room. All of you are gathered there, the many hundreds, maybe even thousands that are going to listen to or read this message at some point. You are all gathered in the lecture room, pull up a chair. Notice what color your chair is when you pull it up. The vibration of energy coming in. And remind your chakras now to be aligned to the vibration needed for you to fully take in this message. And here's a fun thing you can always do to fully take is in. ask, ask that your encodement system be aligned to taking in this information and integrating it. Okay, now remember that central pillar. Please send a beam of energy to that central pillar. It connects us all. And if you are willing, I'd appreciate you sending a beam of energy to my heart as I bring in Amma, the Divine Mother, and that is who you will get to hear from next. Greetings, greetings to you, my dear ones, my precious, precious beings of love. You are of love, you know that. You cannot be anything else because you were created from love. Yes, you were. That is all. We are, Abba and myself. We are only love. Anything you hear about which says that we will punish you or judge you or lop you off from us, I want to tell you something. Those are untruths. That is where the human ego has gotten in the way of the message of love. So today, I thought it would be fun to share with you some of my reflections on what this one was listening to earlier this morning. And I guess you could say the title of this is The Law of Abundance Sucks. You've heard so much about the law of abundance, I am sure. So why does the law of abundance suck? Tell me, why does any law suck? How about if you're in a hurry? You're late for your appointment, you are in your car and you are driving down the street and for some reason, you are stopped by every stoplight. And let's say there is no one in front of you. It is just the stoplight. And there is no one getting ready to cross the street. It is just the stoplight. And you are sitting there at that stoplight. It is red. And you are drumming your fingers on the steering wheel. And why are you there? Because the law to stop at red stoplight sucks. It keeps you from going where you want. Many, many laws that you have suck according to the way that you look at them. But if you change your attitude, I think y'all were talking about changing attitudes before the actual message came in today. If you change the attitude and you look at that stoplight and you say, even though 
I am in a hurry. This law is keeping me safe. Because you never know what's going to happen. You may think there's no one there, but maybe there is. Maybe there's someone coming. And just as I get to the center of the intersection, somebody will come through and there will be an accident. So you have laws that are fairly firmly planted in your society. Those are the ones that you could get fines for if you don't observe them, correct? Then you have other laws, which are not so much written in the same way as your legal code is. You've heard some of these laws. You have probably been told them from the time you were young. Let's take something that this one was told often. You get more flies from honey than you do from vinegar. Now, as she got older, she would wonder, why would I want more flies? I want them to go away. But of course, the whole thing is you acquire more from kindness than you do from being mean or not having compassion. This kind of goes to the law of of attraction. So why does the law of attraction suck? Why was this mentor that she was listening to meaning that the law of attraction sucked? Well, let me give you another example. This is an expansion of the example she heard from this precious being. Let's say that you wanted to plant tomatoes. You were looking forward to those tomatoes and those plants started coming up from the soil. They may have looked a little bit different than the tomato plant you usually plant. But they keep growing and they keep growing. Oh, but they're not going straight up. In fact, they're spreading out. What happened to my, well, they're gonna, I planted tomatoes, so I'm going to do that. And then finally, when you see this green thing, long green thing starting to come from it, you go, I planted tomato seeds. And you go back and you look at the packet and you say, see, here are tomato seeds. And then you look at the packet and it says zucchini. It is a law that if you plant tomato seeds, you get tomatoes. If you plant zucchini seeds, you get zucchini. If you plant eggplant seeds, you get eggplant. If you plant an acorn, you get a tree that's called an oak tree. That is a natural law, is it not? So why do some people think that the law of attraction sucks? They think it sucks because they haven't been given the correct information or they don't want to observe the law continually. Because the law of attraction involves beginning with seeds. Yes, it begins with seeds. Think of something you wish to manifest in your life. Oh, most of you are beyond the area in your life that you wish to manifest being an Olympic runner and where you win the gold medal. But what would you want to manifest physically? You plant that seed in that ground within yourself, the fertile ground within your unconscious mind. You plant that seed of health and vitality. Yet you have within you a lifetime, maybe a lifetime, maybe just the last couple of years of the energy of unwellness. The emotions that come from unwellness, the sadness, the anger, the despair from unwellness. Every seed needs to be watered, does it not? Nurtured, nourished, 
It needs the fertilizer. You cannot have the seed of health blossom from the from pouring on the emotions of anger and despair and grief. You cannot do that. That is one of the reasons why people think the law of attraction sucks or they think it doesn't work. The law of attraction is not a magical law any more than it is important to stop at stoplights is a magical law. The law for stoplights only works if you stop at stoplights. It only keeps people safe if you stop at a stoplight. It doesn't work if people do not observe it. So let's talk more about the law of attraction and what is needed for the law of attraction. The most important thing, oh, let's do two important things for the law of attraction that are needed. Number one, you have something you wish to attract to you. What do you wish to attract to you? Just consider something. It could be health, it could be financial, it could be personal. Now, this needs to be something that you could actually attract to you. Some of you, and there are many of you here who are grieving. You cannot attract to you the physicality of someone who has passed on. You can be open to the spirit of their energy being with you. So you have an intention, a clear intention. And an intention based upon your emotions of what would happen when this was true for you. So what would you feel like when it was true for you, whatever it is that you were manifesting, that you have now moved from this point to the next point? Maybe it's a point 10 hundred miles away, but what is it? that you want to manifest and you move from the emotions you have now about what you do not have to the emotions of what you have when it is fully manifested, that that is now your reality. So emotions now of your current reality, and then what would be your emotions of your desired reality? Now, what's in between them? What is in between them? And you may say, well, I would like a wonderful yacht. You may not, I'm just using that as an example. And I chose that as an example because most of you do not want a tremendous yacht, but let's say you do. And your current reality is you do not have one. Maybe you have a rowboat. And then you look at your desired reality. What is in between that gap in between the desired and the current? What is in between? The different blocks, you could say, it could be boulders or it could be valleys or anything like that that you would have to navigate. It could be beliefs. So what if one of the things that would interfere with you coming between reaching your desired reality is the belief that you cannot. What if the only thing that is interfering with you reaching your desired reality is that you are not 
putting one foot in front of the other to take the next step, or you are not reaching your hand out to reach your desired reality. If you are not opening your arms to take the gifts within your hands. If you are not willing to do the attitude adjustment that you need. But how do you do the attitude adjustment? Go back to what your desired reality is. What is that reality? How does it feel to be in that desired reality? Just imagine you are not in your current 3D reality. You are, have stepped into right now the body of the man or the woman, of the person, of the being who has achieved their desired reality. What feelings do you feel? What emotions are there? How does your body feel? I want you to double those feelings that you have. If you feel power or joy, I want you to double that experience. You can do that. Double those feelings that you have. Raise your vibration by simply feeling that increase. Now double that again. Note how you are feeling. Now we're going to anchor in that feeling. Tap on your heart. It can be your heart chakra. Just gently tap while you're experiencing these feelings these emotions, while you are being these emotions. Keep tapping, keep experiencing the emotions of your desired reality. And now call upon your encodement team, even those of you who are not familiar with them, just call upon them anyway. And ask, encodement team, please arrange, harmonize my encodement system to me being in my desired reality. Let them do their work. Notice any changes within you. And now we're going into a sacred space. Move into the back of your heart chakra. Going through that hallway or tunnel until you come to this expansive room. 
This is your sacred space. It is a magical place. And here you are a creator, you're a magician if you wish, a wizard even. And see your desired reality manifested there in your sacred space. And now ask, what is my next step? What is my next step? into moving into my desired reality. And jot that down in your heart or on a piece of paper. And now ask your healing team. Please strengthen my encodement system for this desired reality and my next step. So now you have the beginnings of this. And I suggest you take this little meditation that we just did and you play it again over and over and over and follow what is said. This will change your energy. And what happens with the energy when you have the emotions of what it is that you wish to manifest, and it is in the now, it becomes a magnet. It becomes a magnet so that your current reality and desired reality come closer and closer and closer to you. Now let's go back to why the law of attraction sucks. You know that next step you were asked to do? That next step, that you were given that you need to take. So many people don't want to take that next step. They don't want to step one step further. They don't want to take that risk. They just sit there. It does not work. The law of reality in that law, you will not grow tomatoes if you plant zucchinis. You will not grow anything if you do not plant the seed. If you are not clear on what it is you wish to manifest, what you wish your life to be, there is no attraction point. The law of attraction is not just this general amorphous idea out there that has no structure. There is a structure. And every time you feel that difference between where you are and where you want to be, and you begin to feel hopeless, you go into your heart source and you call upon your encodement team and say, let me remind you that this is where I want to be. And you get into those feelings. You don't revert back to the old, you stay in the new. And you say, please, again, realign my encodement system for this and ask what the next step is and take it. And you know what happens when you take that next step? 
you have placed within your body, within your neural net, within your whole physical self, that you are now on that path. Because you are working counter to what you have been trained with. How old are you now? This one is 70. She has 70 years of being the old way. What happens when you have, oh, let's take a baking sheet. And it warped. How do you get that baking sheet back? Well, the easiest way actually is to buy a new one, correct? Your next step is moving into your new self. You want to choose by taking those next steps, by repeating, moving into what it feels like to be where you wish to be. You are redoing that whole view in your neural net, that pattern that you have electrically placed in there and forming a new one. And the more you do that, the easier it will be to take that next step. So why does the law of attraction suck? Because you have to work it. It's because you have to plant the seed and you water it with the emotions that you will have in your new reality. And remember, you can't say, but how do I know what emotions I will have? We just went through that. They may change as you do the exercise, but do that. Spend time every day, five minutes, 10 minutes, or just if you're sitting at the stoplight, don't close your eyes or you won't notice when it turns green until somebody honks at you or waves at you with certain fingers extended, right? And you simply be in that place of the emotions, the energy of that new reality and cheer yourself along as you take each step because soon the new reality will be pulled to you. It will be pulled to you step by step. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Take that next step today. I am Amma, the Divine Mother of the Divine Mothers, and oh, I am your mother. And I am with you every step. Well, this was Kathy. It's a message I needed to do. So we were talking before this started about how I've really gotten to where I'm resisting transcribing so much that I have to do. And somebody suggested an attitude adjustment. And I said, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to be able to enjoy doing those things. Well, you know, I figured it's I can focus on what doing those things will give me you know, which is getting this information out to others and others being able to read it and following it and expanding. So that's part of what came to me. I have time if any one or two or three of you would like to share what you experienced. You don't have to. Can I see? Yes. <clears throat> So, so often it is exactly what I've been trying to study and looking up and, and then it's put so simply to me. It's just unbelievable. I'm so grateful. That's wonderful. And by the way, the book, The Creation of Form, if you do not have that, talks a lot about some of this. Mm. It's called The Creation of Form. And it was the golden Elohim of the ones that brought it through me. And so you can get it at Amazon or you can get it at uh, Light Technology. The creation of form. And I've read your books and, and 
I sent away and got your books and oh my goodness, it's just wonderful, Kathy. Thank you. Thank the you very much. To the world, really. Okay, everyone, anybody else have something to say? Just with great clarity, she, um, clarity and simplicity, like you said, um, just lays out, it makes it so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> and take all the pressure <laughs> off of. Um, and um, yes, <laughs> I'm ready. Wonderful. Wonderful. And Cassie, remember what, hold on one sec. Remember that little cue that she gave you is ask your, and this is part of a workshop that I've been working on in my mind for a while. And I think maybe that's what I'll do after I finish channeling this latest book is that you can develop new encodement structures. Just ask your healing team to do that. Yeah. Right. And when you go counter to that, that's where the artificial encodements come in. And so you just ask them, wait a minute. Sorry, I kind of messed things up here. Went in back to the old one. I would like that new encodement structure, please. And I'm going to anchor it with my actions. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Margaret? Uh, I, I just, I, I, I've been doing that. I, I set up new um, influx um, to deal with some ancient things to make it easier to get rid of. I like that in plugs. They're actually plugins, but <laughs> <laughs> that's why it, it works the same way, way doesn't it? <laughs> Lucky. Oh, that was that was fun, Margaret. Thank you so much. Okay, well we've gone past past the hour mainly because we chatted so much at the beginning. But I thank you very much. If there's thank anybody you. else thank who you. wants information on the workshop on Thursday, which is Ancestral Healing, Healing the Family Tree, and you haven't gotten that, please email me and let me know. And I will send you, I'll just send you the link to the, um, to the sales page. Take care. Blessings. Thank you, Dr. Kathy. Many thank blessings. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, New Jersey, wherever you are. <laughs>